had rented a cabin in the woods for a weekend getaway, hoping to enjoy some peace and quiet. The cabin was cozy and comfortable, with a fireplace, a kitchen, and a bedroom. I arrived on Friday evening, unpacked my bags, and made myself a cup of tea. I sat on the couch, reading a book, and listening to the crackling fire. The next morning, I woke up to a bright and sunny day. I decided to go for a walk around the cabin, to explore the surroundings and breathe some fresh air. I put on my jacket, grabbed my phone, and stepped outside. The cabin was surrounded by tall pine trees, and a small stream ran nearby. I followed a dirt path that led deeper into the forest, admiring the beauty of nature. I walked for about half an hour until I reached a clearing. There, I saw a large rock that looked like a good spot to sit and rest. I climbed on top of the rock and took out my phone to take some pictures. I snapped a few shots of the scenery and then turned the camera to myself. I smiled and posed for a selfie when I heard a low growl behind me. I froze in fear and slowly turned my head. There, not more than ten feet away from me, was a mountain lion. It was crouching behind a bush, staring at me with its yellow eyes. It had a tawny coat, a long tail, and sharp teeth. It looked hungry and angry and ready to pounce. I felt a surge of panic and dropped my phone. I didn't know what to do. I had heard that you should never run from a mountain lion, as that would trigger its chase instinct but I was too scared to think clearly. I just wanted to get away from the beast. I jumped off the rock and ran towards the cabin. I hoped that the mountain lion would not follow me or that I could outrun it. I ran as fast as I could, dodging the trees and the rocks. I looked over my shoulder and saw that the mountain lion was chasing me. It was faster and more agile than me and it was gaining on me. When I reached the cabin, I slammed the door behind me. I locked the door and ran to the window. I looked outside and saw the mountain lion standing in front of the cabin. It was snarling and scratching at the door, trying to get in. It was furious and frustrated, and it wanted me for its lunch. I was terrified, and I didn't know what to do. I had no weapons. I was trapped in the cabin with a hungry predator outside. I wondered how long it would take for the mountain lion to break in or to give up and leave. I waited for what seemed like an eternity, watching the mountain lion through the window. It kept trying to get in, but it couldn't. It was too big to fit through the window, and the door was too strong to break. It was getting tired and frustrated, and it started to lose interest. It looked around and saw something else that caught its attention. It was a deer, grazing in the clearing, so it decided to go for an easier prey and left me alone. I waited for the mountain lion to leave, praying that it would not come back. I watched it chase the deer into the forest and disappear from my sight. I felt a glimmer of hope and decided to take my chance. I grabbed my bags and ran to the door. I unlocked it and opened it slowly. I peeked outside and saw that the coast was clear. My car was parked outside the cabin, waiting for me. I dashed towards it, hoping that the mountain lion would not hear me. I reached the car and threw my bags in the back seat. I got in and locked the doors. I breathed a sigh of relief, started the engine, and drove away from the cabin as fast as I could. I didn't look back or stop until I reached the nearest town and checked into a hotel. I called the owner of the cabin and apologized for leaving in a hurry. I explained the situation, and he said he understood. He said he was glad that I was safe and that he would refund my money. I was shaken and traumatized by the experience, but I was also grateful and lucky.
I had survived a close encounter with a mountain lion and lived to tell the tale. I learned a valuable lesson that day. Never underestimate the power and danger of nature and always be prepared for the worst. I had been looking forward to this trip for months. A cozy cabin in the woods, away from the noise and stress of the city. I had booked it on Airbnb, and the host seemed friendly and helpful. He gave me the directions and the key code and assured me that I would have a great time. I packed my bags and drove for hours, following the GPS. The road became narrower and bumpier, and the trees grew thicker and darker. I felt a surge of excitement as I neared my destination. I imagined curling up by the fireplace, reading a book, or watching a movie. Maybe I would go for a hike in the morning. It sounded like heaven, but when I arrived at the address, there was no cabin. There was nothing. Just an empty clearing, surrounded by dense forest. I checked the GPS again, and it said I had reached my destination. I looked around, confused and frustrated. Where was the cabin? Had I made a wrong turn? Had the host given me the wrong address? I decided to call the host and ask him what was going on. I took out my phone, but there was no signal. I felt a pang of fear. I was alone, in the middle of nowhere, with no way to contact anyone. I decided to get back in my car and drive until I found a signal or a town. Maybe I could find a hotel or a motel to stay for the night. Maybe I could sort this out with the host later. Maybe it was all a misunderstanding. I turned the key in the ignition, but nothing happened. The car was dead. I tried again and again, but it was useless. I felt a surge of panic. How was this possible? The car was fine when I drove here. Had someone tampered with it? Had the host set me up? I got out of the car and opened the hood. I knew nothing about cars, but I hoped to find something obvious. A loose wire, a missing part, anything. But everything looked normal. I closed the hood and decided to try the car one more time. Maybe it was a fluke. Maybe it would start. I got back to the front seat and inserted the key. I closed my eyes and turned it. To my surprise, the engine roared to life. I felt a surge of relief. It worked. I didn't waste any time. I put the car in reverse and backed out of the clearing. I turned around and sped away. I drove for hours until I reached a town. I found a gas station and parked. I took out my phone and checked the signal. It was back. I had service. I tried to call the host, but he didn't pick up. I still don't know why someone would do that. Maybe it was a prank. I don't know. I had rented a cabin in the woods for a weekend getaway, hoping to enjoy some peace and quiet. The cabin was cozy and comfortable, with a fireplace, a kitchen, and a bedroom. I spent the first day hiking around the forest, admiring the nature and the wildlife. I returned to the cabin as the sun was setting, feeling tired but happy. I cooked myself a simple dinner and ate it by the fire, listening to the crackling of the wood and the howling of the wind. I decided to go to bed early, since I wanted to wake up early the next day and explore more of the area. I brushed my teeth, changed into my pajamas, and got into the soft bed. I pulled the blanket over me and closed my eyes, drifting into a deep sleep. I don't know what time it was when I woke up, but it was still dark outside. I felt a sudden chill in the air, as if someone had opened a window. I opened my eyes and looked around, trying to figure out what had disturbed me. That's when I saw her. She was standing outside the bedroom window, pressing her face against the glass. She had long, tangled hair, 
pale skin and dark eyes. She was wearing a dirty, torn dress that barely covered her body. She looked like she had been living in the woods for a long time, maybe even years. As soon as I saw her, I felt a surge of adrenaline. I jumped out of the bed and yelled, What do you want from me? She didn't answer, but backed away from the window as if she was afraid of me. Then, she turned around and ran into the darkness, disappearing from my sight. I didn't waste any time. I grabbed my stuff and ran out of the cabin. I got into my car and drove as fast as I could, not looking back. I don't know who she was or what she wanted. I was looking forward to spending a peaceful weekend at my uncle's cabin in the woods. He had left me the keys and told me to enjoy myself. He also warned me that there was no hunting allowed in the area as it was a protected wildlife reserve. I arrived at the cabin on Friday evening and settled in. The cabin was cozy and comfortable with a fireplace, a kitchen, and a bedroom. I decided to make some dinner and watch a movie on my laptop. I felt relaxed and happy. The next morning, I woke up to the sound of birds chirping and the sun shining through the window. I got dressed and went outside to explore the surroundings. The cabin was surrounded by trees and a small stream. I followed the stream for a while, admiring the beauty of nature. I saw some deer, rabbits, and squirrels along the way. I felt a sense of awe and gratitude. I returned to the cabin around noon and made some lunch. I ate on the porch, enjoying the fresh air and the silence. I decided to take a nap after lunch, as I was feeling a bit tired. I went to the bedroom and lay down on the bed. I was about to fall asleep when I heard a loud bang. It sounded like a gunshot coming from the side of the stream. I jumped up and looked out the window. I felt a surge of fear and curiosity. Who was shooting in a no hunting area? What were they shooting at? I grabbed my phone and ran outside. I dialed 911 and reported the gunshot. The operator told me to stay calm and wait for the police to arrive. I hung up and ran towards the source of the noise. I wanted to find out who shot the fire and why. As I got closer, I saw a man lying on the ground, holding a rifle. He was bleeding from his chest, but he was alive. I ran towards him, asking him things like, Why'd you shoot yourself? But he did not answer my any question. I didn't know what to do, so I just stood there watching him as he lost his life. After about ten minutes, I heard the sirens of the police cars approaching. I stood up and waved at them. They parked near the cabin and got out. They saw me and the dead man. They asked me who I was and what had happened. I told them everything I knew. They nodded and thanked me for my cooperation. They took the body and the note. They told me to go back to the cabin and wait for them. They said they would come back and talk to me later. I walked back to the cabin, feeling numb and shaken. I had witnessed a tragedy. I had seen a man take his own life. I had rented a cabin in the woods for a weekend getaway, hoping to enjoy some peace and quiet. The cabin was cozy and comfortable, with a fireplace a kitchen, and a bedroom. It was surrounded by tall trees and a small lake. I felt relaxed and happy as I unpacked my bags and settled in. The first night was uneventful. I cooked some dinner, read a book, and watched the stars. I slept soundly and woke up refreshed. I went for a hike in the morning, exploring the nearby trails and admiring the nature and returned to the cabin around noon, feeling hungry and thirsty. But as I approached the cabin, 
I noticed something odd. There was a man standing outside the cabin, about 30 feet away. He was wearing a dirty coat and a torn hat. He was standing near a tree, staring at the tree. When I reached him, I said, Hello, can I help you? He did not answer. He did not blink. He did not flinch. He just kept staring at the tree. I felt a chill down my spine. I repeated, Hello, who are you? What are you doing here? He did not answer. I felt a panic rising in my chest and quickly ran towards my cabin. When I got to the cabin, I reached for the door handle, hoping to get inside and lock the door. But before I could, he moved. He turned around and saw me. I don't know why, but he looked surprised and scared. Without saying a word, he just ran away and disappeared into the woods, never to be seen again. That was so weird and creepy. I still don't know why that man was acting like that. I always wanted to go camping, but I never had the chance. So when I saw an online ad for a cabin rental in Yosemite National Park, I thought it was the perfect opportunity. I booked the cabin for a week, packed my bags, and drove to California. The cabin was located in a secluded area of the park, surrounded by tall trees and a small lake. It was cozy and rustic, with a fireplace, a kitchen, and a bedroom. I felt like I had found a hidden gem. The first few days were amazing. I explored the park, hiked the trails, and enjoyed the nature. I saw deer, squirrels, and birds. I even caught a glimpse of a bear, but it didn't bother me. I felt free and happy, but things changed on the fourth night. I was lying in bed, reading a book, when I heard a loud thud outside. I got up and looked out the window, but I didn't see anything. I thought it was just a branch falling from a tree, so I went back to bed. A few minutes later, I heard another thud, followed by a scraping sound. It sounded like someone was dragging something heavy across the ground. I got up again and looked out the window, but it was too dark to see anything. I felt a surge of fear, and I grabbed my phone to call the cabin owner, but there was no signal. I realized I was alone and isolated, with no way to contact anyone. I tried to calm myself down, and I told myself it was probably just an animal. Maybe a raccoon or a fox. Nothing to worry about. I decided to go back to bed, but I couldn't sleep. Then, all of a sudden, I heard a knock on the door. A slow, deliberate knock, like someone was trying to get my attention. I froze in terror and I didn't dare to move. Then, after that knock, I heard someone walk outside my cabin. They went from the front door towards a window and knocked on it. I held my breath and hoped they would leave me alone, but they didn't. They walked around my cabin, knocking on every window and door. They seemed to be looking for a way in, or maybe just toying with me. I felt like a mouse in a trap, waiting for the cat to pounce then, I heard them walk into the woods. The knocking stopped, and the silence returned. I waited for a few minutes, but I didn't hear anything else. I wondered if they were gone, or if they were hiding in the dark, watching me. I never found out who was outside my cabin. I always wanted to go to the Rocky Mountains, so when I saw an online ad for a cabin rental near Rocky Mountain National Park, I didn't hesitate to book it. It was a small, rustic cabin with a fireplace, a kitchenette, and a cozy bed. It was perfect for a solo getaway from the city. I arrived at the cabin on a Friday afternoon after driving for hours through the scenic roads of Colorado. The cabin was located in a secluded spot surrounded by pine trees and a clear stream. I unpacked my car, lit a fire, and made some coffee. 
I felt relaxed and happy. The next day, I decided to explore the park and do some hiking. I put on my backpack, grabbed my map, and headed out. The park was beautiful, with snow-capped peaks, green meadows, and crystal lakes. I followed a trail that led me to a stunning waterfall. I took some pictures and enjoyed the sound of the water. As I was about to leave, I noticed a sign that said, Bear Country. I remembered reading that there were black bears in the park and that I should be careful with my food and trash. I checked my backpack and made sure everything was sealed and secure. I didn't want to attract any unwanted visitors. I continued hiking for a few more hours until I realized it was getting late. I checked my map and saw that I was still far from the cabin. So I decided to take a shortcut through the woods, hoping to save some time. That was a big mistake. As I was walking through the dense forest, I heard a loud growl behind me. I turned around and saw a huge black bear standing on its hind legs, staring at me with hungry eyes. I froze in fear. I had heard that you should never run from a bear, but try to act calm and back away slowly. I tried to do that, but the bear followed me, getting closer and closer. I looked for a weapon, but I had nothing. No knife, no gun, no pepper spray. I wished I had brought something to defend myself. I felt helpless and doomed. The bear was now only a few feet away from me. It opened its mouth and roared, showing its sharp teeth. I screamed and threw my backpack at it, hoping to distract it. It worked. The bear stopped and started sniffing the bag, curious about its contents. I seized the opportunity and ran for my life. I knew it was risky, but I had no other choice. I ran as fast as I could, hoping to find a road, a car, a person, anything. But there was nothing. Only trees and darkness. I ran until my lungs burned and my legs ached. I didn't look back, afraid to see the bear chasing me. I prayed that it had lost interest in me and gone back to the woods. I prayed that I would make it to the cabin alive. After what seemed like an eternity, I saw a faint light in the distance. It was the cabin. I felt a surge of relief and joy. I had made it. I was safe. When I reached the cabin, I slammed the door behind me. I locked it and collapsed on the floor, panting and sweating. I was alive. That's all that mattered. I went to the fireplace and lit a fire. I needed some warmth and comfort. I wrapped myself in a blanket and sat on the couch. I tried to calm down and forget the horror I had just experienced. This experience still gives me chills. <laughs>